Hey, everybody, we just finished the new newscast. You can see everybody here is busy working at KHOU. And when you talk about work, one of the big things these days is for folks looking for jobs. This is a big deal. Kids are graduating right now, and lots of folks lost their jobs because of oil and gas downsizing. So we have an expert here now, Dr. Tracy Weiland, and she has just uh, one of your most popular books. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure, Employed for Life. It's really a three 360 degree look at how people get jobs today from the views of HR directors, hiring managers, employees mm -hmm. who've gotten jobs, people have gotten new opportunities mm -hmm. and changed their careers. All right, all good things we would like to talk about. So if you have a question while we're visiting with Dr. Wyla, type it to us, Facebook Live, and she will answer your question directly. So this is like a chance for you to have kind of like a, a little free expert advice and who doesn't need advice and help, especially these days in the job market. So we were talking a little bit earlier, we got a lot of kids who are graduating now, graduation season is coming up, and they are first time job market seekers, if you will. So tell us a little bit of good advice for them for the first timer, if you will. Sure, well, first of all, keep your resume to one page. It, it is true that recruiters and hiring managers will only give you a 20 or 30 second review. So make sure you have the highlights there. Number two, don't spam your resumes. We truly do use applicant tracking systems that track all the resumes that come in. If you see 100 coming in for all different kinds of jobs, you're gonna get thrown in the trash. Number three is focus your resume. Really think about, am I a marketing major? Then focus all of my volunteer work, my community work, my subjects that I learned, mm -hmm. and activities I did at school on a marketing job, and go for it, right? If you're going to go for engineer, that's a completely different resume. Okay, uh, I'm gonna flip around here for a second because we got some questions, and I'm gonna wanna go ahead and share them with people so that uh, you can go ahead and answer some of these. Here we go, sorry. That's a little bit. All right, Elsa is asking, what is the best way to contact someone who won't respond to your emails? Because you feel like you sent something out to the black hole, you're not getting an answer. What's the appropriate way to deal with a situation like that? Well, Elsa, number one, I, not knowing the context of why they're not responding to you, there could be a number of things. You may have applied to a job that doesn't really exist anymore on, on a job board. You may have applied to a job that an internal candidate has gotten the job. Number three is that job may have gone away. So my suggestion to you is don't bank on one job, but look for many. If you don't hear back, you may hear back a few months later. Don't nag them, right? Usually the protocol is you apply for a job, wait about a week or two, check in. If you don't hear back, move on to your next opportunity. Keep a tickler so that you know where, when, what you've applied for and your follow-up. What does tickler mean? A tickler is really just keeping track of what job you applied for and what date, when okay. you did your follow-up, and then give it some space, wait a week or two, okay. you don't hear back, let it go. Lashad is saying he is going to welding school. He wants to know what the job market looks like for welders. So congratulations for going to welding school because the trades are actually up. Uh, our companies are looking for an organizations, looking for people who have skills and in that area. I would also would encourage you to think about other expanded areas such as underwater welding. Ooh. Yes, they actually make mm -hmm. more money if you like scuba diving or ah. like the water. Um, there are, get creative about how you can expand that, that great skill that you're getting. Gracia is asking, what's the best way to impress the hiring manager? Well, number one is be professional, right? Ask questions, intelligent questions. If there is information on their website, uh, you should know that before you walk in the door. And you know, number three is being practice before you go and be able to articulate what you're bringing to that employer on day one. Because employers hire you expecting you to contribute on day one. Pull in your experience and show have you done it before and you can do it again. So if you can be specific about what you could do, uh, what you know about the company, that's a good thing. Action words, produced, numbers, metrics, increased sales, decreased costs, brought in new business, all, all right. strong. 
take notes, people. All right, Juanita is asking, what's a good website to look for jobs in the Houston and Pasadena area? This may be a little tricky for Dr. Weiland because she's not really from our area, but maybe you got some broader suggestions? Here's, yes, here's my suggestion. The world is your oyster. Number one, go to the companies in your local area. They will have what they call career sites. They will even have areas for people who just graduated from school. Number two is go to, go to the job sites, aggregators, Indeed, Career Builder, Monster, and then sort by your zip code because ah. you can get right into the jobs in your area. Okay. Lulu wants to know, where can I find work from home? What are some good suggestions for remote work? Remote work. So every company may have remote work. So I would look at the companies. Number two is the job boards will advertise jobs that are on site versus at home. Number three, as I mentioned earlier, you can go to sites such as Elance, right, where you have freelance opportunities. And the world is, is really out there for you because they could be jobs in many countries or many states. Okay, we got a lot of questions coming up here and I apologize if I miss a couple of folks. If you don't see your answer, ask again. It just means you scrolled past on the Facebook feed here. Uh, Darlene's asking, what's the market like for jobs in manufacturing and in accounting? Manufacturing, actually, my recruiters tell me is on the up. It just depends. It can be very localized. So manufacturing may be in certain regions, certain areas. Look at, go to professional associations for manufacturing and find out where the jobs are. Accounting, I love accounting. It's longevity. I have colleagues who are still in, in walkers wearing oxygen tanks in accounting. <laughs> There's always a need for accounting. Think about specializing. Think about specializing in a, in a specific area like high tech or different mm -hmm. industries. Okay, you know, just a quick note, my sister-in-law is a CPA and she works from home most of the time and that has worked out for her. She's got a young kid. Um, Wan Tag says she wants, uh, Wan wants to take aviation school training. Is that a good idea? Any thoughts about aviation? If you want to be a pilot, it's a great idea. Um, so I would actually investigate and talk to the career recruiters at the aviation school. Ask them, where do your graduates go? How long does it take them to get a job? And who are the key people who are hiring your graduates? And then go to those companies and ask them, right? Before you plunge in, it's a lot of money, it's a lot of hours. Make sure this is exactly what you want to do and find out what your prospects are. All right, always good cost analysis. Isaac is asking, says, I need a job as a chef. What about restaurant work? Learning to cook, being a chef. Yeah, uh, you know, I'll tell you an interesting story. I have a couple of colleagues who actually volunteered at restaurants for a summer to really assess if they really wanted to be in the restaurant industry, mm -hmm. or they made a swap for tips or different activities, mm -hmm. got a rotational program. I would look at, at and take on a number of different jobs at restaurants. You can get them for pay. They're advertising all the time and try different kinds of restaurants. Is it fast food? Is it gourmet? Is it the white, you know, table linens, mm -hmm. hotel restaurants, airport, and really see if, if this is something that you want to do. Okay. Uh, yeah, those can be long, hard hours. So you should go in knowing exactly what you're thinking about. Lee is asking, what about industrial distribution? Do you have any advice for that? I don't even know what that is. No, this distribution is big. It's mm -hmm. just really being able to, I just actually was speaking yesterday at a mm -hmm. major distributor show. Um, it's figuring out what products and industry that you want to work for distribution for, you know, so is it manufacturing? Is it cleaning supplies? Is it um, transportation? And then hone in and find out what, what requirements they have. Um, Andrew is asking, what about the market for logistics slash administration? So that, that's a very narrow market, and this is something that I would mm -hmm. actually go to a professional association and recruiters who specialize in okay. logistics. Transportation uh -huh. is big, mm -hmm. right? Everything is getting delivered, right? Amazon is a behemoth, right? There are many jobs in transportation and logistics. It's actually figuring out Mm -hmm. Do you have the skills for the jobs that they're hiring for? So I think it is a good bet, but I would go to the big ones like Amazon mm -hmm. and learn the names and the titles of those kinds of jobs and figure out where you fit FedEx for another example and UPS. 
Okay. And Alexandra says, what about, oh, here's the big one here. This is the elephant in the room, oil and gas for us. Uh, Alexandra's asking, should folks in this industry, if you've still got a job for the moment, should you be looking to make a move to some other place, another industry? Okay, here's what I would do in oil and gas, and, and I feel for you because I'm in high tech and we go through cycles. Oh, right, right. When you're working, take advantage of everything at that company. Skills training, vendor training, customer interactions, make sure you take on projects, keep yourself expanding your skills and experience so that when and if something happens, you are prepared. If they have tuition reimbursement programs and you can you know, get an additional degree or certification, go for it. Learn the technology, right? Technology is the future in many industries. Make sure you learn the technology, get your hands dirty with it so you can stay relevant. Okay, so max out your opportunities where you Absol are. Absolutely. All right, Bill's saying, I am a medical technologist, need a better job. What could you segue to from medical technology? So depending on what you're specializing in, and I don't know, mm -hmm. I would look around where you're working now to see, it's always easier to get a new job when you're in an organization because you understand the culture. And I would look and see what's the emerging technologies in your area. There's, more, there's a lot of opportunity when you can link into a real emerging technology. And then I would also keep up on the periodicals, join the professional association, and keep your eyes and ears open and meet some recruiters in your industry because I think there's a lot of hot areas in the future for you. Alice wants to know about accounting, and I know you touched upon that a little bit, but anything else you want to add about accounting? Well, as you mentioned earlier, it's a li it's one not only a lifelong career, but it's also one that you can transition into your own business part-time through different phases of your life. And so just keep up on your, on your accounting certifications mm -hmm. and your credentials so that you'll always be relevant. Um, Ahmed is asking about inventory control. Inventory, again, I'm going to go back to this whole logistics and transportation. Companies like Amazon, FedEx, mm -hmm. UPS have a lot of demand here. Mm -hmm. Look for where who's generating all of this. And right now it's very big in, in retail. And it's just a, a, a big area of opportunity. DJ has been one of those victims, the thousands that we've had in the oil and gas industry. Let's take just a little minute here maybe for you to give some, you know, some deeper advice to folks who have lost a job in this field. You know, I know you had talked a little bit earlier about looking for other industries or how do you sort of um, transfer your current skill set you know, how do you broaden yeah. that, move that to someplace else? And are there other industries that may not be, you know, come top of mind that you could look at if you were an oil and gas guy? Sure. So first let's talk about um, adjacent and like industries. So if you're in the oil industry, what are other industries that might be like your industry? So is renewable energies. Are there different facets of the oil industry that has relevance? Because you have subject matter expertise. Are there software or technologies developing? Mm -hmm. Because they are always looking for that subject matter expert that they can bring in and train right into their area. Second area, think about the functional area that you had in your job. Were you in marketing? Were you in finance? Were you in sales? This is something that you can transfer to another industry. So I understand healthcare is big here. Okay, there, yes. Shipping. Mm -hmm. So if I have an expertise, can I bring that into another industry? Number three is, if you really know oil and gas, can you create a job for yourself, right? What are some of the emerging areas? Can you start to create what we call portfolio careers? Finding freelance jobs or temp jobs, putting together your skills and experience so that you can become relevant. I talked about earlier, volunteering. You know, many people spend one day a week volunteering in a new industry. One, so that they can show them that they show up, they're responsible, they're skilled, they have experience, and the exchange is that they're getting known and they're building up new skills. So there's a lot of ways, you know, and don't forget about the whole internet. These on-demand sites, you know, I mentioned Gigwalk, Thumbtack, Elance, Go out there and look for jobs. These are real jobs. These are real jobs that companies have and they pay. 
Okay. All right. I, I think this is going to be our last question. We're coming up on about 15 minutes here, and I know Dr. Weiland has a lot of things to do. So we really want to thank her for sharing her expertise. And I haven't been able to say yet, but a lot of the fo folks that have answered, uh, gotten answers from you, have been typing thank you very much. They appreciate your, your knowledge. Uh, this is probably the last question here. Andy, just throwing this one out. Andy's asking about finance. What's your thought about the finance so, industry? Finance, again, is one of these great functional areas, right? You can work in finance for, for a very long time. Think about specializing. The world is getting very specialized. So what are the hot areas in finance? And explore that. Try jobs in different areas. Remember, a chief financial officer, which might be a goal for you, has to have multiple experiences in different areas of finance as well as different industries. So really, the world is your oyster and go out and pursue it. All right. Okay. Uh, Tracy Weiland, thank you so much. Author of? Employed for a Life. Employed for a Life. And she had been a lecturer at Stanford. Uh, she has worked over in the Silicon Valley area with a lot of companies there. Um, so thanks for your questions, folks. DJ, you're welcome. Ahmed, thanks. He's saying real estate's pretty good. So uh, Rob, thanks for talking to us. So we will see you all uh, tomorrow and later on on 11 News. Thank you, Dr. Weiland. As I like to say, ciao. Thank you.